The following program has been brought to you in part by Sennheiser and the Airline Pilots Association. On this episode, we'll tell you how the U.S. government can level the playing field for the airline industry, where you can find good eats in today's airports, and exclusive footage of flying in the high Arctic. All of this and more here on The Flight Deck. Hello, I'm Sharon Varab. Welcome to The Flight Deck. The Airline Pilots Association recently outlined clear solutions the U.S. government must pursue to level the playing field for the aviation industry. ALPA President Captain Lee Moak cautioned that while foreign countries invest heavily in airports and infrastructure, the United States promotes policies that actually hinder our ability to compete in the global marketplace. ALPA released a white paper during a recent speech Captain Moak delivered to the Aero Club of Washington. To read the white paper, visit levelingtheplayingfield.alpa.org. Senators Barbara Boxer and Olympia Snow introduced the Safe Skies Act of 2012 in June. The bill advances ALPA's efforts to promote and ensure one level of safety for all airlines, cargo, and passengers. In related news, the FAA recently said it would revisit the rulemaking that excluded cargo airlines from the new flight duty and rest rules. Federal government attorneys said the agency made errors in cost calculations used to justify the cargo carve-out. The FAA will issue a new evaluation of the cost and will accept public comments on these calculations until July 31st. ALPA First Vice President Captain Sean Cassidy testified before the Senate Commerce Committee on the European Union's emissions trading scheme. He told lawmakers about the many ways airline pilots are already reducing aircraft emissions. The true solution to reducing emissions is pursuing the voluntary efforts I have already mentioned and creating an international emissions guidelines through ICAO. The Kyoto Protocol, the G8, and the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change all make it clear that ICAO is the appropriate organization to glide, guide the global airline industry's efforts. ALPA considers this scheme a job killer. The Transportation Safety Board of Canada released its new watch list calling on Transport Canada to address critical safety issues. Several aviation items made the list, including air safety management systems, landing accidents and runway overruns, risk of collision on runways, and collision with land and water. The board is an independent agency that investigates aviation transportation occurrences. Its sole aim is the advancement of transportation safety. Representative Chip Kravac offered a floor amendment to boost next year's FFDO funding. The line item increases the program's allotment to $35 million in the House Homeland Security Appropriations Bill. That's a $10 million increase over current funding levels. Apple will work with congressional leaders to ensure robust funding levels. Congressman Mike Rogers picked apart TSA Administrator John Pistol during a Homeland Security Subcommittee hearing. He grilled the administrator on the TSA's customer service reputation and called on him to create a leaner, smarter agency. During the hearing, John Pistol had this to say. These risk-based security initiatives that we are taking are making a difference. I think if you ask any of the 1.5 million people who have been through pre-check, including, again, a number of folks here in the room, uh, I think they would say it is a very positive experience. It's a step in the right direction, and we are working aggressively to try to expand that population base. ALPA supports the risk-based security approach and wants to develop a security culture at all airlines and airports. This will help our industry reduce the insider threat at a very reasonable cost. Ever wonder where to find the best food on your trips? After the break, we'll give you some of our pilot's top picks. From the first time I boarded a commercial plane as its pilot, I've embraced the responsibility I have to the safety of my passengers and crew. And I have the best flight gear, even the headset certified for commercial duty. It lets me concentrate on the task at hand, making this the safest flight my passengers will ever have. The feature-packed HMEC 26 provides long wearing comfort and more than 18 dB of noise reduction. Try the HMEC 26 on your next flight and hear the difference for yourself. Food at airports has come a long way. It's evolved from fast food to sit-down restaurants. 
Foodies tout personal favorites, and we asked Alpha Pilots to give us the lowdown on where to find the best grub. If you're traveling through Atlanta's airport, try out Nature's Table Bistro in the e-concourse. First Officer Aaron Recchi says it has the healthiest food at the biggest portions for a reasonable price. Headed through Chicago's O'Hare? Don't miss First Officer Jeff Wine's absolute favorite restaurant located in the B Concourse. He recommends the Cubana sandwich for an incredible mix of flavors. Finally, one of our pilots touted the fish tacos at the St. Paul International Airport. Captain Rob Basma told us that you can find them along with a great salsa bar at the Maui Taco and Surf Bar in Concourse C near Gate 5. So what do you think? Did your favorite airport dish make the menu? Tell us what should make our next Good Eats segment at flightdeck.alpa.org. Now that we're in the midst of the summer heat, it's almost refreshing to see Alpa President Captain Moak in Resolute Bay. On the first air route map, that's the farthest point north the airline serves. Captain Moak visited with several first air pilots back in February tagging along on a typical trip. And what he quickly learned is that flying for first air is anything but typical. You know, we're not talking air traffic control all the time. We're kind of on our own. There's that sense of independence. But just the environment that we fly in um, takes a little bit to become cognizant of the fact of, okay, well, I don't have a lot of options here. So you've really got to be aware of the big picture. But ask any first air pilot why they chose to fly for the airline, and you'll get almost the same response every time. We see incredible scenery for one, we see a lot of the same return customers for two. So you get to fly with uh, people that you enjoy working with. You get to see passengers in the back of the plane that you actually personally know. At the same time, the customers that we fly with, a lot of them know us personally. They know our reputation and they appreciate the fact of what we do for them every day, doing our best to get them in and out of spots that some days is not the prettiest whatsoever. During his trip, Captain Moak witnessed several challenges that his flight crew experienced while operating in the high Arctic. Yesterday, we were out at the airport to uh, fly out, and um, the uh, aircraft from First Air, uh, which brought us up and now is picking us up, uh, was en route, and the runway shut down here in Resolute because another aircraft, a Dornier aircraft, taxied out onto the runway for takeoff and blew its tires. And it's partly what inspired him to put the resources of the association behind one level of safety and security in the high Arctic. Captain Moak recently announced the creation of a special presidential committee for remote operations. Captain Peter Black, who also flies for First Air, will chair the committee. It will address the challenges that professional ALPA aviators overcome on a daily basis during operations in the far northern areas of Canada and the United States. Learned a lot about uh cold weather ops, learned a lot about high Arctic operations, and it's amazing that our pilots do this day in and day out in these conditions uh, as safely as they do. Uh, I noticed that the uh, pilots' professionalism was above and beyond, and when they're flying, they were always uh, preparing for the next emergency, and what we saw in a couple of days here is there were several emergencies. In fact, one airplane from um, the carrier was also flying into Pond Inlet and that was an ATR-72 and as it was approaching the airfield it had to turn around and divert three hours back because the temperature dropped below minus 35 at the runway and that airplane couldn't land on the runway below minus 35. So that, that goes to show just how extreme the conditions are up here and the uh, extreme professionalism of the crews that fly here. To learn more about First Air's fabulous flying, check out the June-July issue of Airline Pilot. Now it's time to watch and win. First, congratulations, Michael Sperry, for making it to the next round. You were randomly selected from the correct entries from our last episode. Michael will be entered into our grand prize drawing. Now on to today's question. What's the new level of funding for the FFDO program as proposed in the House Appropriations Bill? Visit our website to submit the answer for your chance to win. That's it for this episode of the Flight Deck. Thank you for watching. If you have any feedback, please let us know at flightdeck at alpa.org. Thanks again, and I'll see you next month here on the Flight Deck.